establish peace internationally. Da Zhao, a Cole Perkins, a junior in corporate finance and Chinese. Just as the islands have risen from the sea, we rise to empower our world. Our university's mission is to prepare students with the character and integrity to provide leadership in their family, their community, their chosen professions, and their home countries. 안녕하세요. My name is Ji Hoo a junior in Jisoo from South Korea. We selected projects that responded to the needs as well as had measurable results, and we remain on course to achieve the cycle to change the world. Our written report details how we empowered others by using business and economic principles and an entrepreneurial approach. Hi, my name is Kathleen DeLong, and I'm a sophomore in marketing from Washington State. For our presentation today, we'll focus on three of these projects and how we have empowered students on our campus university, residents in our North Shore community, and others around the world. We invite you to join us as we begin with one of our successful legacy projects, which is held on our campus. We come to our beautiful campus on the North Shore of Oahu from over 70 countries, mostly <coughs> Asia and the South Pacific. The economic opportunities for our returning students often must be created. We recognize the need for the spread of entrepreneurism to complement their majors or emphasis and prepare them to compete in increasingly competitive markets. The Think, Plan, Do initiative was born to address the serious need of nearly all of our diverse student body who want to return to their homelands and make a difference, but do not have an idea or a plan and lack the leadership and entrepreneurship skills necessary to make things happen. Let us share with you the exciting things we're doing to assist our 2,500 students on campus. The Think, Plan, Do strategy embodies the three stages of entrepreneurial development. Students are encouraged to first think of an idea, then create a plan, and finally implement or do the plan after they graduate. For the second year in a row, we held our two annual sec Think, Plan, Do conference. First, we sponsored Great Ideas Exchange in the fall, one of two conferences held during the school year. In the second annual Great Ideas Exchange, we challenged BYU Hawaii students across the campus to identify a great idea that could result in meaningful and economic opportunities when they graduated. We received over 650 submissions. On the first day of the conference last November, students presented their ideas to business representatives, including our business advisory board members, our faculty, and university sponsors. Then we met in our activity center in small circles with a business leader assigned to each group. There, we shared our ideas and received positive feedback and suggestions. Then on the second day, we gathered together again where the eight students with the most popular ideas presented them in a forum attended by over a thousand students, faculty, and executives. The winners were awarded an ice cream treat symbolically demonstrating that ideas are not worth much. But when idea moves from think stage to planning stage, we begin to see how the real world operates. Listen while we expand how our ice cream cones turn into $60,000. After we think of a great idea, the next step is to develop a plan. During the latter part of March, students develop their ideas into a plan in what we call the Empower Your Dreams Conference. In order to engage the entire campus, several competitions, in addition to our more traditional business plan competition, are held to showcase student ideas. These plans, <coughs> these competitions include U.S. business plans, nonprofit business plans, international business plans, and non-competitive business plans, as well as six others shown here. With these multidisciplinary plans, students move closer to graduation with a clear set of ideas that are now defined and ready for implementation. The students with the top ideas receive a total of $60,000 in cash prizes, which they use as seed money to implement their plans. Here's what our advisor, Jim Ritchie, hopes will be the result of these experiences. One of the prime missions of our university is to send our students home to their very diverse cultures from 74 different countries to become leaders in their communities. Scythe recognized that in order to help them become better prepared to do that, they created the Think, Plan, Do initiative, which is to help them in the fall, fall semester think about a great idea, in the spring and the winter semester write a plan that would help them execute that idea, hoping that with that in their hand they can go home and have the confidence to make a difference when they return home. 
Since this event is held in the latter part of March, we will report on the results of the conference held last year after our last Scythe Regional Conference and share with you our expanded plans for March 24th of this year. Last year, Mark Lovenden won was the winner of the business plan competition receiving $7,000 and another student, Natalie and from Haiti received $1,500 in the social entrepreneurship category. What has been the impact on this conference? Site member Brett Lee was one of the winners two years ago in a business plan competition and started at Healthy Fully Rentals at the Turtle Bay Resort near our campus. The business plan competition was very helpful for me. Uh, prior to the actual competition, the weeks prior, they, they held several seminars that explained the importance of creating a winning business plan. We are currently planning for a big event Thursday of next week. Our administration agreed to cancel all of our classes for the day, so our entire student body can participate by sharing their plans, watching their friends compete, and celebrating with the winners. After participating in this event for two or three years, BYU Hawaii students can return home with two or three plans in hand when they graduate and work on implementing their plans. From Mongolia to Samoa, Taiwan and mainland U.S., the effect of this conference ripples throughout our community, our state, and the world. For the third year in a row, BYU Hawaii site has helped empower Nikki Mozo, a beloved committee member and friend. This year, our influence extended to many members of our North Shore community with the new branch of the project. Nikki's husband, John Mozo, started his own photography business with a fusion of his love for the ocean and his talent in photography. The business swelled due to his passion for what he did for a living. On February 9, 2005, John tragically lost his life while shooting photography in the waters near Bonsai Pipeline, leaving Nikki and their four children. After his passing, and without an entrepreneurial background, Nikki was faced with trying to courageously manage the business on her own. Scythe members stepped in and applied learned business and economic concepts to support the Mozo family. They organized inventory, developed accounting practices to organize and track expenses and incomes, as well as develop new marketing uh, strategies. This year, after much work and planning, Nikki Mozo's uh, a dream to honor her husband's legacy is finally coming true at Lunch of Nahaku. An entrepreneurial mentorship program for youth in our local high school. Nahaku is the creators in Hawaiian language and serves to promote the creativity of young entrepreneurs. Many hours of the past six months have been devoted by BYU Hawaii Scythe members as we have crafted a curriculum, organized inspiring speakers for the youth, and brainstormed activities and field trips that would help fortify their entrepreneurial pursuits. Members of Scythe coordinated with business professionals to develop a 25-page curriculum booklet for each student. Scythe has also been able to coordinate with 11 mentors who have worked individually with students throughout the <coughs> program to help them understand basic uh, principles of being an entrepreneur and starting their own business. Scythe's goal is to teach and encourage these young people to start their businesses when they graduate by empowering their passions. Enrolled students possess a wide variety of interests ranging from photography, painting, mixed media artwork, baking and cooking, videography, and graphic design. They are now learning to develop those interests and capitalize on them at the same time. One of the projects that we're currently working on is the Young Pacific Island Entrepreneur Project, where we take some students from our local high school and we teach them entrepreneurship training, things like business planning and budgeting and accounting. We want to take a young man who may be interested in art, a young lady who may be interested in art, and teach them the concepts of entrepreneurship. Students are also encouraged to put the things they are learning to the test and actually apply the principles learned. Each young student will be teamed up with at least one to two mentors to help them along the way. As the mentorship program takes on, Scythe has been elated to witness growth in interest and attendance. Now, Haku's first meeting hosted five high school students. The second meeting, one week later, six more had joined, which doubled his attendance. Our Scythe team, along with Nikki Mozo, hope to reach our goal of 15 students by the next meeting, as we continue to support and guide these young entrepreneurs in powering their passions. In igniting the dreams of others, we find it is impactful to reflect upon the inspiration as a stimulus. 
In combined efforts of the BYU Hawaii side team, the Moza family, and other associates, we have had the honor of creating a documentary chronicalizing the legend, life, and legacy of the late John Moza. The documentary will spark a spirit of creativity and motivation in others, as well as serve as publicity for marketing the family's business. With John's legacy as a fulcrum for these projects, Saif and Nikki have ignited within others the passions that John possessed. The highest elevation is 15 feet above the sea level. Due to the rising sea level, this projected that these coral atolls will soon be covered by crystalline waters that surround them. Under these circumstances, the population has begun immigrating to New Zealand, Nui, or the Fijian Islands. When Toa first entered BYU Hawaii, he became a member and then a leader in SAIF and had attended the 2009 SAIF's National Expo in Philadelphia. Through Toa, Members of SAIF and advisors learned about and became fascinated with Tuvalu, <coughs> its economy, quality of life, and standard of living. Through TOA, we learned that the typical family lives off of $1,000 a year, that they needed school supplies, and that many of their citizens are unprepared to start their own businesses or to relocate and find jobs. As students in free enterprise, we devised a plan that would provide educational material and help them sell some of their products in the United States. Beginning last fall, we started collecting books and supplies from schools and organizations, totaling more than two tons of educational material. A family member of our project leader, Doc Bishop, owns a retail store in California, coincidentally called Tuvalu Homes. When my sister heard about the project, she offered to sell the handmade Tuvalu crafts in the store. In addition, they had a fundraising event, which they raised $7,000, which would go to shipping of the education supplies and also of the importing of the Tuvalu handmade crafts to the store. But this is only the beginning of our adventure. While on campus last November, attending our 2010 Great Idea Exchange, Shauna Oki, a BAB member from Canada, learned about the needs of this island and our plans, and generously offered to fly a team of SAIF students on her corporate jet to Tuvalu. Along with Shauna and another BAB member, Eight students and three advisors spent five incredible days in Tuvalu earlier this month. We wore t-shirts that read, Tuvalu, Education, Empower, Enterprise, with the Scythe logo on the back. The people of Tuvalu love the outside world. It's an island tucked away in the South Pacific. And when we arrived, when we landed on the runway, if you remember, the whole town came out to watch us arrive, and the whole town was there to see us off. The whole island was there to greet us when the plane landed. Many had never seen a jet before, and they watched as Toa returned home to his family and village. During the next few days, we watched as Toa became a symbol for what each of their children and youth could become when they took advantage of their potential. Upon arriving, we met the Ministry of Education and outlined the workshops and the trainings that had been planned. They had originally set up a venue for only 60 students, but quickly had to arrange for something much larger to accommodate the island-wide interest. Our topics included six-step formula to success, self-esteem and confidence, and higher education opportunities. A community meeting was scheduled for that evening when we were invited to share our plans for the week. Following our presentation, school leaders and parents began raising their hands requesting an opportunity for their children to participate in these conferences as well. Therefore, the venue changed to accommodate over 200 16 to 19 year olds who sat on mats for two consecutive days. Our study of Tuvalu, we identified a low self-esteem problem that existed among but most of the 1,200 youth. Eight of us found ourselves on the radio and we discovered we were coast to coast. Now the coast is only about 40 yards wide, but we were there. <laughs> Our study of Tuvalu, we identified a low self-esteem problem that existed among most of the 1,200 youth who feel they trapped in 19th century world while they have access to internet. Though limited, gave them the glimpses of 21st century opportunities. 
Our team determined to use TOA as an example of what each of them could aspire to be through education, hard work, and a more positive outlook on life. Our advisor made this observation. For me, one of the highlights <coughs> was watching TOA return to me. And he was stepping off of a corporate jet, having met his goals, graduating from college, and returning home to be with his family and his home community. They were trained to take meaningful notes, to review those notes, and then share them with a friend who was also involved in the training, to convert their new knowledge to near perfect retention. We gathered at Toa's Village Center later that evening. One of uh, the highlights of our trip to Ulusavala was uh, when Toa Village invited us over for a culture celebration. We were able to listen to their speeches and take part in dances with them and singing songs with them. Uh, we listened to the songs of their culture and we got to share some songs from our culture, including um, I'm a Child of God and Aloha Lake. One of the parents of our SIFA members donated laptops and some computer equipment for this project. Another company donated $15,000 in software to teach English to children in a fun way. We offered training uh, to the teachers in, on the use of the software. Our BAB member, Lay Cummins, helped with the training. Fun for us to see the excitement in their faces as they interacted with the games and the activities um, of the program. And as a result, they were able to take into consideration the mobile lab solution that we provided. To demonstrate their appreciation for the educational shipments and computers, the primary school, consisting of 800 children, prepared a special program for us. After a welcoming speech by the Minister of Education, the principal and head teacher, we were entertained and presented with a Sulu and a Lay and invited to join the children in dancing. Our students exchanged emails with them and have already started corresponding. Interactive meeting we held with 25 Tuolumne crafters where we discussed that types of handmade items will now be sold in U.S. retail store Tuolumne Homes. Our team also located $2,000 of the money we fundraised to supply the crafters with improved tools that we expect nearly double their productivity and reduce their health problems accompany their arduous labor. Ned Williams was responsible for these discussions. The Tuvalu women are very skilled and talented with their handicrafts, but they lack a market in which to sell them. So we sat down and we talked about ways that they could innovate their products. We found new tools that they'll now be using to increase production. Setting up a website to help them with online sales, and they'll also be sending products regularly to a store on the mainland, with all profits being sent back to their island to empower them and their businesses. The youth leaders from each of the villages also asked to meet with us to bring some ways to be more effective and working with the youth of the islands. Donations of laptop computers, thousands of textbooks, leadership trainings, entrepreneurship and attitude training, grooming and dress for success training, as well as preparation resume, resume classes preparation, combined for a positive experience for every student, and they plan on for more and more as our SIFE students raise their windows of belief to levels they have never before experienced. Evidence that our training had a permanent impact were the 200 plus letters we received before boarding the plane, expressing their thoughts, ideas, and what they had learned, and more importantly, what they were going to do about what they had learned. Our team has secured a $5,000 microphone loan to help initiate with these plans with small grants for entrepreneurial startups throughout the island. On our way back to Hawaii, we made additional stops and presented this and offered the same workshops in Fiji and the Marshall Islands. In the Marshall Islands, for example, we arranged to conduct two and a half hours of training for over a hundred youth, as well as with church and school leaders. We also left laptops with English learning software for their children and coordinated with local handicrafters to plan new market options and improve profitability. We made a big impact in the short time we spent there. And reflecting on this remarkable and memorable experience, Here's what Toa had to share. A high school student, because they look at us, you know, um, that we on the same level. We all try to gain an education to support our families. I think that's really what makes them a you know, a big impact in their life. Best thing we can offer is the heart of our people. I truly believe that that this young and beautiful, you know, young men and women, they can make a difference in the world. 
We have had over 100 participating members and tens and th of thousands of individuals benefiting from our site projects this year, from our campus to an island in the Pacific. We have shared three projects as examples. In the criteria this year, we have First, address the relevant economic, social, and environmental factors by helping our students to pre prepare for their own economic development in the Think, Plan, Do conferences. Also, assisting the people of Tobol by preparing <coughs> to meet the rising water conditions on their island. Second, effectively empower our target audience by giving college students two to three plans that they can implement to develop a smooth business. Second, to provide high school students with a vision of their own potential by high school college students and develop in the youth of Tobol a vision of their own potential by a visit from one of their own, a young man named Toa. Third, targeted people in need by reaching out to an entire campus, totaling 2,500 students, which includes students, students from over 70 countries, in a campus-wide approach to thinking and planning their futures, giving high school students the ability to prepare for their futures, targeting the educational and employment needs of an island nation that has an uncertain future. Fourth, applied business and economic concepts and entrepreneurial approach by uh, providing a format and financial support for our college students as they generate their own businesses and teaching entrepreneurship to the youth and adults in Tuvalu and assisting them in long-term strategies to support their businesses. Fifth, improve the quality of life and standard of living for the project beneficiaries by assisting students from over 70 countries, including <coughs> developing nations, to create a business plan and also providing a role model of a young man who has been successful and who now wants to return home to help his country develop greater potential. From these experiences, we now know that when you throw a pebble into the ocean, you see a splash and hear the resounding plunk of the pebble hit the water. You have caused a change through a single and simple act. Just like stones thrown into the ocean, simple actions create ripples in the lives of all the people you touch. As a side chapter this year, we set the goal to impact the lives of others. That change started in our own lives and then rippled across our campus, our community, and throughout the world. On behalf of the BYU Hawaii Psych Chapter, we extend to you Mahalo and Aloha!